Today we're going to look at a very interesting approach to figuring out the Mellin transform of the sine function. And our approach is going to make use of another very important integral transform, so here's how it goes. We're interested in the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times the sine of x. And the s parameter here lies between negative and positive 1. And our approach is going to make use of a very cool result I derived a while back, link in the description below for a proof, that the integral from 0 to infinity of f of x times g of x dx equals the integral from 0 to infinity of the Laplace transform of the function f times the inverse Laplace transform of the function g, both treated as functions of some variable, let's call it t, or you could just call it x again, integration with respect to t, or x depending upon whatever dummy variable you choose, it really doesn't matter as long as the, as long as the structure of the integral remains intact. So let's take our target integral i and write this as the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x times 1 by x to the 1 minus s. And that means our integral is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of the Laplace transform of sine x times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 by x to the 1 minus s dt. So the first thing we want here is the Laplace transform of the sine function. And using our trusted table of Laplace transforms, we see that if we write the Laplace transform of the sine function as a function of t, then we get 1 by 1 plus t squared. And now for the inverse Laplace transform of 1 by x to the 1 minus s, which again, using our table of Laplace transforms, we could make this a bit more clear if we expand using gamma 1 minus s. So I have 1 by gamma 1 minus s outside times the inverse Laplace transform of gamma 1 minus s divided by x to the 1 minus s. And now it's pretty evident that we have for the inverse Laplace transform t to the negative s and we're dividing this by gamma 1 minus s. And all of this implies that the target integral i equals the integral from 0 to infinity of the Laplace transform of the sine function, which was 1 by 1 plus t squared. And we have for the inverse Laplace transform t to the negative s divided by gamma 1 minus s, integration with respect to t. Now, the gamma 1 minus s term is independent of the t variable, so we could write it outside the integration operator and we have 1 by gamma 1 minus s times the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the negative s divided by 1 plus t squared dt. Now for a nice substitution, we're going to let t squared equal u, which implies that t equals root u, which implies that dt equals 1 by 2 root u dt. So now the integral in the u world is going to be 1 half because of that differential element times the reciprocal of gamma 1 minus s times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the negative s by 2 times u to the negative 1 half again because of the differential element divided by 1 plus u du. In other words, we have 1 by 2 gamma 1 minus s times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the negative s plus 1 by 2 du divided by 1 plus u. Now to invoke one of my favorite integration related tools, that is the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the v minus 1 divided by 1 plus u du. This is of course the integral form for Euler's wonderful reflection formula. So we have this equal to gamma v times gamma 1 minus v, which is pi times the cosecant of pi times v. And in this case, we have v minus 1 equal to negative s by 2 minus 1 half, which implies 
that V equals one half minus S by two or one minus S by two. Plugging this result into our integral means that we have I equal to one by two gamma one minus S times pi times the cosecant of pi times the value of V we have, which is pi by two minus pi S by two, terribly sorry about that. So we have pi by two times s. Okay, cool. So that means we have pi by two times one by gamma one minus s times the secant or the reciprocal of the cosine of pi s by two. And that is a pretty cool result, but we could make it a bit more compact if I work with this gamma one minus s term a bit more. So like I said, Euler's reflection formula makes me go rock hard. I mean, I enjoy invoking it quite a lot because of its utility. So we might as well invoke it one more time. We know that gamma s times gamma one minus s equals pi divided by the sine of pi times s. But that means gamma s times the sine function here, sine of pi s divided by pi equals one by gamma one minus s, which is exactly the term we need. So that means the target integral i equals pi by two times gamma s times sine of pi s divided by pi times the reciprocal of the cosine of pi s by two. And we have some nice cancellation here with the pi terms going out and we might as well invoke the double angle formula for the sine of pi times s. So we have gamma s times two times sine pi s by two times the cosine of pi s by two as well divided by twice the cosine of pi s by two. So again, we have some lovely cancellation taking place, the factor of two going out as well. And that means the Mellon transform, that is the integral from zero to infinity of x to the s minus one times the sine of x dx equals gamma s times the sine of pi s by two which is quite a nice result to look at indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.